and welcome to my somewhat detailed review of this Yamakasi Sparta 330 inch Super IPS monitor from Korea. Yamakasi, by the way, if uh, you're wondering where that word came from, it sounds like it's Japanese, but in fact it's a Congolese word for strong of body and taken by the parkour discipline or free running practice in France in the 1980s and 2000s. So uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, in the 30 inch class of monitors, there are now a few options you can get for uh, your liking. Um, you know, there's about five or six now. Dell has the UltraSharp that's been around for a while at 1200 to 1400 US dollars. HP has a ZR30W at around 1500 for the 7 millisecond version. And of course, yours, you have your trusty Apple Cinema 30 inch at 1700 plus if you can find one. And NEC has the multi-sync at $2,300. And of course we have then the Korean suite of 30-inch monitors that have come on the market in probably the last year or so as far as I know, maybe, maybe earlier. And these include the Yamakasi, which we have here today, Shimian, Crossover, Leonatus brands of monitors, all within generally the $500 to $800 range US. Depending on the model, the input capabilities, that is DVI versus multi-inputs, including HDMI, or if you want a so-called pixel perfect guarantee edition, and that's what I have opted for here today. So why the difference in price for the same monitor, essentially the same monitor, they're all SIPS panels? Well, as the name would suggest, uh, Sparta, it's a pretty a bare bones monitor with minimal inputs and options. Um, and there's only a brightness, for instance, the um, options on the menu bar down here, you can't quite see it in the video probably, but there's only a brightness and there's no level indicator, so it just goes brighter or dimmer to your liking. And there's a volume control for the speakers included and the non-off button. So there's not much there. You can't calibrate it uh, using um, the on-screen display. You have to do that using software and Windows or other proprietary software. Uh, but really, probably the main reason is that these are so-called A- panels from LG, uh, which probably supplies a lot of, of the other manufacturers, including Apple. Uh, well, we know that it supplies Apple. So there's a possibility of dead pixels. Um, in fact, all of the eBay sellers will say that they guarantee no more than five dead pixels um, scattered throughout the screen with no more than one in the center of, of, the, of the monitor screen dead pixel. But my experience from reading the forums, uh, such, at, uh, such as at um, overclockers.net, uh, which is, I think, the only forum right now for this, these monitors, basically people aren't saying that they have any dead pixels or very few, so I don't think it's much of a worry. If, if you're worried about that, for a few dollars more, like about $40, $50 more, you can get the pixel, no dead pixel version. The other thing is you're not paying for a brand name. Uh, you're buying directly from Korea, minimal markup from eBay supplier, and they're dealing in volume, not only monitors, but other things as well. So, you know, you're, you're not paying for the Apple name in a lot of ways. One thing to note that what I'm talking about here today is not the Cat Leap version of monitor, which you can also get, and the Cat Leap is the LED backlit version, and this display is um, standard uh, fluorescent tube backlighting, or CCFL um, uh, backlighting, cold cathode um, fluorescent uh, lighting. Uh, the question though really probably pops into your mind and really the reason for this review, a more detailed review, is uh, you're probably a little bit leery or questioning about ordering a monitor from Korea over eBay versus going to your favorite online computer store or local outlet um, to buy one like a Dell or, or an Asus or something, uh, a 27 inch Asus or something. So you, you know you have some doubts. So I'm going to review this buying the buying the monitor from eBay, the, a bit on the dimensions and physical specifications. Um, I'm going to set this up with VESA mounting and uh, show you how that looks in the end. And then a little bit of performance uh, display using Unigen's new Valley benchmark and Metro 2033, which is my favorite video game for detail and uh, taxing a video card. And, I, and I'll compare the specs, at least the output from, from in terms of frames per second and visual characteristics versus my Samsung 5003 TV 
which is an LED TV at 1920 by 1080. And really the reason for that comparison, because there's a big difference in contrast here, or contrast, I should say, resolution. Uh, really, but the pricing is similar between these things, a uh, 40-inch TV and a 30-inch high-performance monitor around, you know, um, $600, let's say. They're, they're both in that range. But anyway, um, on the shipping and the seller, I bought this monitor from uh, a seller that's called Big Cloth Craft, who had the best price at the time for this particular version of the monitor. Really good communication from all the eBay sellers, really. Uh, I had a lot of questions for the other sellers as well. Uh, there's a 14-hour time difference ahead, so they're ahead 14 hours, so you have to factor that in, uh, in terms of uh, responses on communication, but it's all been very good. It was shipped by UPS. Uh, I didn't have a choice in this case because of size restrictions of the box, and so it had to come UPS uh, to Canada. Cost uh, was not too bad. Well, there's no cost for the shipping. It's free shipping, but um, I paid a little bit in duty, and it arrived in mint condition. I mean, there was no. It even the box was untouched, and they actually they wrapped the box in a thin polyethylene high density uh, foam, uh, which is about a quarter inch thick. So that really protects the box from any. Well, it's coming from halfway around the world, so that's a good thing to have. Now. A little bit on the specifications of this monitor. It's a so-called WQXAG, and this is a wide quad extended graphics array, and I had to look that one up myself because I wasn't sure exactly what that meant. And it's 2650 by 1600 uh, pixels, uh, which is four times as many pixels as a 1280 by 800 display. Now that's the definition of WQXAG, uh, I found out. And it's a super IPS panel, so that means that super in-plane switching. So this means that the pixels, my finger here, um, are pointing right at you as opposed to a twisted pneumatic panel in which the, the pixels can point downwards and when light hits it um, from behind or from the sides, they can scatter that light and make the color not, as, not quite as good and perhaps the viewing angle not quite as good as well as sharpness and text. And I certainly have found sharpness and text to be much better in the IPS panels versus TN panels. This is, a t this is a tempered glass cover on the panel itself, so this is not a matte finish. Um, it's like a TV. It's like an LED TV. It's a glass function. So there's some reflection. Uh, it's not a big deal for me because I'm usually, you know, when I'm working on uh, using uh, business applications, then it's a white background and I don't have a lot of reflections. It's not a big issue. Uh, and then when I'm gaming or doing other things, uh, the lights are low, so I don't find it to, reflection to be a big factor. It may be for you, so if you like the f um, matte finish, I think you can get these apparently. You have to ask the eBay seller to ship you a matte finish, and maybe not all of them have the matte finish one, so you, you should inquire with the eBay seller about that. So it's a 30 inch monitor, as I said, so this means it's 40 centimeters in height from inside the bezel to inside the bezel at the top and 64.5 along the top of the bezel inside so you know over a page and a bit in terms of a full scap page 8.5 by 11 it's a 16 by 10 uh, or 6 by 1 by 1 to 6 ratio um, so that means oh, uh, sorry 1 to 1.6 ratio meaning that the length um, is the length is 1.6 times the height of the, of the monitor. So it's 60 hertz, not 120 hertz, as in some of the Catley 27 inch monitors um, that you might come across. So it's 60 hertz. Uh, six milliseconds response time. I assume it's gray to gray, although that's not actually specified on the web uh, sites from the sellers, but I assume it's gray to gray. I have heard there's no, no problems with um, lagging or ghost, ghosting images in gaming uh, from uh, the forums. Uh, 370 candelaras per meter squared, so that's a, a luminescence rating, and that's quite good. That's the best you can get, actually, in, in, the, in these monitors. It's equivalent to the Dell UltraSharp. 1,000 to 1 contrast ratio, same as the UltraSharp, so these are good specs for, um, for a monitor. Uh, one thing, uh, just wanted to show you a little bit of the, the profile of this monitor in the back. Uh, but before I do, I'll just say that the bezel widths here are about an inch, and this is oh, about two inches on the bottom. Really not unattractive. I find it's uh, not overbearing or anything. It's, it's quite a nice looking monitor, um, so I'm not displeased with, with that. Um, so I'm just going to spin this guy around to show you the back. 
can see what the back looks like and some points on the vessel mounting. The power bar here. So on the back, uh, you can see that there are some holes for vessel mounting. This is basically uh, 300 by 200 millimeters or um, 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters and 100 square, 100 by 100 square centimeter in the back. Now this is an unusual size for VESA mounting because usually these are 100 by 100 or 200 by 200 square. So it's a, you're, you're getting a bracket to fit that. You're probably going to end up using the 100 by 100 for mounting. Um, this weighs about 20 pounds without the stand. Uh, so you need a bracket to support that and basically my uh, LED 40 inch Samsung TV weighs about the same without the stand as well so there should be no problem. Um, the screws, the size of the screws for uh, putting, for mounting it on the, uh, on the VESA stand is um, three millimeters. In fact they're the same size screws as that comes with the stand that you, you, you attach the stand to. Uh, which is pretty simple to assemble and, and attach, so I don't need to go into detail there. But you, if you're not using the stand, then you can just use the screws to mount it, to VESA mount this uh, um, monitor. I just want to note uh, on the side that obviously this monitor has a swiveling capability to some degree, probably about you know 30 degrees or so, but. The my monitor tilts a little bit forward in the stand on the profile. I don't know if you can easily see that there, but I'd say it's about five angles off of level, straight up, or five to ten. That will be gone when I best mount it. But it's something if you're you're using the stand at home on your, on your desktop. The stand is a little bit wobbly, not bad actually. It's it's pretty it's pretty firm. The base is actually heavy glass, thick glass with a black insert, plastic or metal insert. So it's it's pretty stable. Um, you know, if you have a very wobbly desk and you have kids around, you might want to be thinking about VESA mounting it. But um, it's it's not bad overall. Now, just uh, this is a DVI D only monitor, so you'll need a good cable, or well, actually one comes with it. You can use one you have or one that comes with a monitor, and I'll show you actually what comes with the monitor in a second as I turn this guy back around again. There we go. Power brick in front, so you can see that. There we go. Okay, so what does come with the monitor? Well, obviously the monitor and stand. You also get a DVI D cable. Now, as I said, you can get HDMI versions uh, of this monitor, but this is a DVI D only. So you'll need a cable, uh, well, you'll need a graphics card, I should say, that has DVI D capability, and most of the modern video cards are that, so you don't have to worry. But that's a solid brick of pins across here as opposed to a split in the center of two, two groups of them. In fact, if you look at the website from the sellers, what they're basically saying is you need to have a DVI-D dual link video card, not a single link type cable or video card uh, because that's 1080p capable. This is higher than 1080p capable, so you'll want to make sure you, uh, you have that. So that comes with the uh, monitor, that's all good. You also get the power cord uh, that fits into the power brick. Now this is basically a transformer that allows you to plug in anywhere in the world and convert the, the currents uh, coming out of your wall. I, I noticed that this gets quite warm, by the way, um, almost hot to touch. Not quite hot to touch, but almost. So you might want to think about finding a place where it's not sitting on your desktop on wood, like this one. Um, you know, put it somewhere safe. It probably won't be a problem, but just, just uh, something to think about. Um, also, this is a uh, plug that comes with the monitor is actually for continental Europe or Asia and certainly Korea. So uh, this won't work in North America, you, but they send you an adapter, a uh, universal adapter, a travel adapter that you've all probably seen before that you can use and it has a locking mechanism so it, it you know, can lock in place so it doesn't fall off. But the other thing you can do is simply use an older power cord you have from another monitor or another uh, PC power supply and plug it into this instead of this and you'll and with a North American uh, three-pronged uh, plug so you really don't need this in the end and you have to have to worry about the adapter which sometimes can become loose and, and fall out of the socket in the wall. The other thing you get with the monitor 
is a little audio cable for audio out from the speakers in the back. But that's not something you would probably use, well you might, but the sound is not, I'm not even going to bother with the sound because the sound probably won't be good. Phys physics would dictate it won't be good, so I won't bother with that. Um, I think uh, that's all I wanted to say about the uh, overview of this uh, monitor before I move on to some performance, which will be part two of uh, this d more detailed review of this monitor. So stay tuned. Uh, that's just an overview of the monitor itself.